Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bharatiya, and welcome to another episode of Securate. Cybersecurity has become a hot topic recently, especially in the wake of ongoing attacks and after two executive orders by the Biden administration. One was stressing on software bill of materials, and second was more or less on right to repair. The repair, Department of Defense, as expected, is in many cases leading the industry by creating some of the most ambitious program for cybersecurity. It could be uh, Iron Bank, Platform One, or this is STIG. We have discussed Iron Bank and Platform One earlier. Today, we are going to focus on STIG, which stands for Security Technical Implementation Guide. And joining me today is Brian Langston, Director of Cloud Architecture at Mirantis. Brian, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. If I ask you, uh, from Mirantis' perspective, what kind of program is the US government or Department of Defense running to enhance cybersecurity, which you feel that you know it's not just the scope within the, the government agencies, but go beyond uh, in the private sector as well. So the U.S. government uh, and many parts of it are actively involved in defining various standards for how uh, computing is done, whether it's cloud computing or legacy. So as Cloud computing has evolved, the government has had to evolve with it. And in doing so, uh, you've got the uh, organization known as NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which has had to upgrade um, or update their standards for computing to account for the unique um, differences and characteristics of cloud computing. Um, so you've got documents like NIST 853, that have uh, newer revisions. Uh, other NIST publications uh, cover things specifically like containers. Um, then you have the, the government uh, organization, the Department of Defense that has the STIG certifications that really is a checklist for uh, what a compute environment should have. So, and there's, there are other NIST publications that I, um, that I know of that uh, all really address to uh, help secure uh, computing environments today. FedRAMP is another one. Uh, FedRAMP is a, is a government program that has very uh, well-defined uh, requirements for uh, those use cases that need to align with FedRAMP. And, and those are constantly updated as well um, to account for you know, cloud computing um, uniqueness. Now, can you quickly just talk about uh, STIG a bit? So the STIG is driven by the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, they're the ones that certify uh, every uh, STIG certification. Uh, what they're trying to do is establish a standard that really governs um, and, and establishes a standard of, of configuration and process around technical environments. So a STIG is essentially a um, it's essentially a checklist, right, of, of things that pertain to a product's feature that also relate to the processes around uh, a product, how it operates, so that the combination of the technical implementation of a product as well as the supporting processes around it all produce a secure operating environment. So one thing that's important to point out that even though the STIG is, is driven by the Department of Defense, it's essentially, when you double click on it, it's essentially a, a set of checklists. And when you look at the details that are being certified, um, you'll basically see that it's industry best practices that are defined, that no matter if you're a government customer or not, if you look at those things as uh, things that can help any organization secure their compute environment, that's a good thing. Again, whether you're a government customer or not. Should a companies give any weight to a stick and yes, why? In my opinion, they should. Um, Marantis has a number of customers that are government, non-government. What I always tell them and how we communicate STIG and other um, government-led uh, standards that we adhere to is that if it's good enough for the US government, it's good enough for you. And sometimes these customers that I'm talking to are in financial services or they are global telcos or they're in a, a number of other industries where security matters. Uh, and really it doesn't matter if you're a government customer or not, security does matter. And all we have to do is look uh, in the history of just 2021 alone to see the, the number and scale of the various attacks that have hit um, companies across various industries. So 
I, I, I advise our customers to look at STIG not so much as a government requirement, but look under the covers a little bit and you'll see that they essentially are industry best practices. Um, you might not need to go to the extent that a STIG does, but you would be wise to at least consider uh, what, this, what the STIG is and make the appropriate uh, determination for your own environment, what parts of the STIG are, are relevant. Right. And since you brought up the topic of you know, the ongoing attacks, especially in uh, 2021, uh, next week, uh, there is going to be a cybersecurity meeting at White House. Uh, can you talk about, uh, because Mirantis does a lot of things nowadays, uh, can you talk about you know, what initiatives are there from Mirantis to not only contribute to this conversation, but also become part of the solution. Really, there's a couple things that, that really map here. And one is that sometimes these um, attacks that we've seen this year, at least, um, point to a couple of things, uh, if I were to categorize them in themes. One is the lack of culture uh, in companies. And by culture, I mean top-down directives, top-down uh, messaging that communicates the importance and severity of security and what happens if it's not taken seriously. Uh, that can take a, a number of, of different ways to establish a culture. Uh, there's also the, the, the theme of training, right? How well are you training uh, general employees, technical employees? Uh, Mirantis has a training organization that trains um, people around the world really on what the current security uh, technologies are that are relevant to the uh, you know the, the cloud native environment that uh, many of us are uh, engaging in right now. And another one has to do with uh, what we refer to in Mirantis as a secure software supply chain. And so in light of the White House meeting, you're referring to one, one thing that we can do to kind of help support uh, and engage in that conversation is communicate what our methodology is behind a secure software supply chain. Um, we have security embedded throughout many parts of our product, but it's not just about what's embedded in the product, but what our customers are doing at a more holistic level, supply chain, right, factory kind of uh, implementation of their own software development lifecycle processes. So what we mean by this is you have a lot of inputs to what your software supply chain is and how that is secured matters. And in a lot of cases that I, that I see, um, the security and the engineering organizations within companies really don't talk to each other, um, partly because they don't understand each other. <laughs> when security tells engineering or asks engineering to comply with a certain set of control frameworks, um, engineering doesn't know what that means. And when engineering says, here's what I do, security doesn't know how that maps to what their controls are, right? So when we engage with our customers around the concept of a secure software supply chain, we basically act as a bridge that enables these two teams to find out what that common language is. And in the context of a secure software supply chain, we can identify where and how uh, the security organization's requirements fit so that the engineering team knows the right way to implement those things. Now, if you look at uh, uh, Mirantis's perspective and Stig and FIPS, uh, how does all of this, uh, you know, work together uh, in, in terms of, you know, because the ultimate goal is to offering much more security to his customers. Uh, so let's talk about how does Stig and FIPS fit into what Mirantis is offering to security users. And customers. There's a lot of people, you know, in the industry that refer to security as a as an onion, right? It's got lots of layers. Uh, we have we have a similar analogy to use, and in that analogy, uh, we could say that things like FIPS um, are at the core. They're at the center of this onion. That's kind of an inner layer, if you will, because what FIPS does is it provides secure communications. Um, where at our level of implementation of FIPS, right, at the container runtime, we're talking about protecting any operation that has to do with a, con with a container action, right? Whether it's starting up a container, um, deleting a container, anything that inv involves a container uh, operation, our FIPS certification covers. And then if you start expanding out in, a, in outer layers of this onion, you have things like a STIG, which is more holistic, right? It has to do with, all right, let's look at the whole implementation of your cloud solution. What best practices are followed? What processes 
govern the uh, the operation of this of this environment. Um, and then another layer is, like I said, the secure software supply chain. So, um, so FIPS and STIG are really just a a very few pieces to the overall uh, puzzle, which is complex, right? I mean, it's a, it's a complex picture when you add it all up together, but um, but really providing FIPS at the core of our container operations is uh, kind of the heartbeat, right? We, we, we support our customers that also have their own FIPS certification to do, and our FIPS certification is just one element of, of theirs. Can you just kind of uh, emphasize a bit on, you know, the, the... You know the recent announcement that you know Mirantis is, is you know FIPS uh, one forty uh, having two validation. What does it mean for uh, customers and users? And also, if you can you know quickly uh, uh, just just you know the impact they will have. FIPS one forty two is is really limited to the uh, standard for providing um, secure communications right through a set of cryptography uh, libraries. So what we've done is compiled into our container runtime uh, FIPS libraries that uh, provide that secure communication. So if you're a customer that's building a software stack, uh, you're going to care that we have FIPS certification because other areas where FIPS will be engaged could be at the host operating system level, which sometimes we don't we don't manage, we can manage that, but we don't in all cases for our customers. But FIPS can also be applied at our customer's application level. So there are, and there are other areas where FIPS can be applied. So as you can see, our implementation of FIPS is just one of many that can be uh, looked at to certify an entire solution stack. Um, so if we weren't FIPS uh, certified, with our container runtime, we might be the uh, the wrench in the spoke, if you will, right? The impediment to our customers achieving cert their own certification. So by us having it, we don't get in the way. We complement uh, our customers, and um, we're we're just one of the many ways that secure communications is enabled. And also, there is uh, FIPS uh, one forty three. Uh, can you quickly talk about the difference between uh, FIPS one forty two and one forty three? And once again, what would it mean for the customers and brands? Yeah, one forty three is not a complete rewrite of uh, of this standard. Um, it really leverages a lot of what FIPS one forty two already has. Uh, there's also another a module that. Um, that provides for multi-factor authentication when a certain module is engaged. Uh, there's another um, enhancement to um, to other kind of fundamental 140-2 uh, components of, of FIPS, but uh, it's kind of an extension uh, and an improvement, but it all is uh, intended to uh, just kind of keep up, as we were talking about before, keep up with the evolution of, uh, of, of computing and um, uh, maintain a high level of, of security. Brian, thank you so much for taking time out today and, and talk about uh, the initiatives uh, from the Department of Defense and also how private sector or companies like Mirantis are kind of helping users, customers stay safe. Thanks for your time today and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you.